Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. I am your host, David Delk. Today our guest is Greg Kafori, who is a partner of the Portland law firm Kafori & McDougall, whose motto is Lawyers for the People. Greg received the Public Justice Award from the Oregon Tri Trial Lawyers Association in 1994, quote, in recognition of continued efforts to create a more just society through creative litigation and innovative work with the broader public interest community. He was also co-director of the successful effort to close the Tro Trojan nuclear power plant here in Oregon and chief architect of the uh, Nader Super Rallies uh, in 2000. So welcome to the show, Greg. Thank you. Great. And we had your son on once, so we're, you know, he did a great job, so we're expecting you will too. I'll try. Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, your website says that we represent people, never corporations or insurance companies. But why do you never represent corporations? Well, uh, one makes a choice as to how to spend their life. And uh, I'd rather represent people than corporations, uh, which contrary to what Mitt Romney tells us are not really people. <laughs> well, yes, right, yes, they are not really people. Yes, we've been talking about that a lot lately, so good. Um, so we want to talk about civil liberties under, okay. under Bush and civil liberties under uh, Obama. And um, just talk a little bit about, the, um, about civil liberties under, under Bush. Uh, George Bush is a guy who, if his name hadn't been Bush, would have been, uh, you know, an insurance salesman in in, uh, in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, a guy of, of very limited abilities, who made major decisions, uh, shamefacedly, by saying, you know, well, I trust my gut. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I just sort of do what I feel like doing right now. Mm -hmm. and, and if that even though the gut of the nation was telling, should have been telling him <laughs> yeah, otherwise. Yeah, it, 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 it's well, it's 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 the sign of somebody who's not very smart. And they'd say, you know, he, he rebelled at, at memos that were more than a page long. And uh, he, he, you know, he was a, a decamillionaire, and yet he uh, uh, had essentially never been outside the United States of America mm -hmm. when he was president. He was an enormously incurious man. And uh, uh, all he'd ever known was, 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 was business. And he'd, uh, uh, his, his political work for his father had been uh, tactical. Mm -hmm. rather than substantive and uh, you know all of a sudden he he lands there as the as the hand-picked agent of big business and he's he's serving them and then he gets the idea that you know he really wants to be a wartime president mm -hmm. and you know that sounded good to him so uh, that's what he became mm -hmm. uh, Obama on the other hand is a man of enormous sophistication and uh, he was a constitutional lawyer a constitutional law professor and uh, what he's done in the area of civil liberties, he's done uh, eyes wide open. Mm -hmm. And as to whether it's, uh, his policies are better than George Bush or not, you could on the one hand say his, uh, his appointments to the Supreme Court have been uh, adequate to good, which mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. And he has, by and large, ended uh, torture at America's uh, prisons, secret and otherwise, uh, as far as we know. Uh, and he has issued orders to that effect, and that is, uh, that's to the good. On the other hand, uh, uh, his cheerleaders on the issue of civil liberties include uh, uh, Dick Cheney, hmm. who uh, speaks glowingly of how uh, Obama has uh, adopted Bush's uh, policies on civil liberties and uh, enhanced them. That should that should alarm us to be might, endorsed by Cheney. Might give you a clue. Right, uh -huh, right. okay, yeah. So. Uh, Talk for just a minute specifically about some of the attacks on civil liberties that happened under Bush. Uh, Bush secretly ordered the telecom companies to give him uh, private emails of citizens and to, to tap the phones of citizens and, uh, and, and uh, to give him that information. And uh, a number of them did. Uh, some of them actually resisted. And uh, each time that Bush, Bush's administration got a, uh, a secret uh, wiretap, it was a felony. Mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, the law was just a lock, airtight. Every single time, that's a felony. People can go to prison for it. And they did it, indications are, by the thousands, as a matter of, of course. Uh, they were just wiretapping anybody they wanted. 
we will never know how many. We will never know who, thanks in large part to uh, uh, Senator Obama, who, when, when he was running for president, said that uh, he would filibuster a bill which would have granted these companies immunity and would have thrown a, a national security cover over the whole thing so that we'd never know exactly uh, who they'd listened to or what they'd learned, mm -hmm. and, and give them uh, a get-out-of-jail-free card, prevent prosecution of the Bush people and the telecom people and, and everybody involved in this, uh, in this uh, uh, legion of crimes. And he said he'd filibuster it, and then in the middle of the campaign, he changed his mind, said that not only would he not filibuster it, he was going to vote for it, and when there was uh, some outcry among his uh, more mm -hmm. ardent supporters, mm -hmm. uh, he went to them and said, uh, is this a deal breaker? In other words, mm -hmm. it's me or George Bush, what are you going to do about uh, yeah, it? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, and that's sort the of been... The beauty of a two-party system. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, and that, 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 that's, that's sort of set the tone for everything that's happened since. His people kind of, you know, bit their tongue, and, and, uh, and since then, he's been able to get away with murder, amongst other things, mm -hmm. uh, referring in particular to Mr. Uh, Halawaki. And, uh, and the left, who uh, were outraged at the civil liberties violations of George Bush, mm -hmm. uh, have held their tongue. And as a result, uh, Obama and the, uh, and the national security team have, uh, have uh, mm -hmm. had their way, and they have lain the legal framework for a police state. Um, they don't need anything more than what they've got. Mm -hmm. For instance, if, uh, if Newt Gingrich should uh, uh, win, the, win the presidential election, he's already declared that he believes uh, the president has the power to ignore what the courts do. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, including the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court could say, no, you know, you can't do this, that, and the other thing. And he's publicly declared that, uh, well, you know, they got their opinion and I got mine, and if I'm president, <laughs> I can do what I want. Uh -huh. and, and he's talked extravagantly about ha hauling judges in and grilling them about why they've made the uh, decisions they've mm -hmm. made. And, and uh, you know, if they don't come, you send uh, the marshals there with handcuffs to drag them in. I mean, um, so he's got a, a, a mentality which is... Uh, which is one which is well suited to the kind of uh, legislation which uh, Obama has signed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that legislation includes the uh, new Defense Authorization Act, which says that uh, the president uh, and uh, uh, through the military can arrest anybody he wants on his signature without charges, lock them up without a lawyer, lock them up without telling anybody where they are, lock mm -hmm. them up in some prison somewhere, and uh, throw away the key. So this is in violation of the most fundamental <laughs> foundations it of goes, our democracy. It goes, well, it goes back to King John, uh, yeah, so how you right, know, yes. who, who was generally thought of as a bad person, mm -hmm. who was, uh, who was uh, required by the, by the, by the powerful uh, feudal lords to, to sign uh, the Magna Carta. Mm -hmm. and, and that created the, uh, the uh, writ of habeas corpus. Right. which means, you know, bring me the body. Mm -hmm. uh, so that if someone uh, is, in, is in custody, they can have a writ filed on their behalf, brought to court, and then the court can say, bring this guy in and explain why he's being held, explain the legal basis for locking this person up. Mm -hmm. And if the judge says that the legal basis is inadequate, he can order the person be released and they have to let him go. That's a pretty basic right. It's a very basic. Yes. When uh, uh -huh. when Obama was here in Portland, uh, I heard him speak at the uh, at the Coliseum, and it was a hell of a speech. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, I remember walking out, and uh, the exits were kind of small. It was a huge, huge crowd. People jammed together, and everybody seemed to be feeling very good. And uh, there was a woman in front of me. I remember who 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 just turned around in wonder and, and spoke not so much to me as just you know. In exultation, she said, uh, "They just don't want to leave. Oh. You know, <laughs> it's not that the exits are too small. People are so overjoyed at mm -hmm. having this guy, mm -hmm. and he sounds so wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and that attitude created a a sense that uh, uh, you know the king can do no wrong, mm -hmm. and that 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 the job of progressives has been to embrace Obama and whatever he does." 
grudgingly. You don't criticize him. Don't make waves. Don't do anything that could undermine him, that could hurt him, that could, that could help the Republicans. And so uh, uh, after he got elected, the, uh, the left went on a vacation. And they'd been on a vacation for four years, pretty much, until, uh, until the Occupy kids mm -hmm. finally uh, uh, yeah. made well, some noise. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's amazing the extent to which the same things that, uh, that got Bush uh, uh, drew enormous criticism from people on the left. Uh, when Obama does it, uh, the response has largely been mm -hmm. silent. Yeah. So, so develop that a little bit more. What, what kind of things has Obama done that the left should be speaking to that they haven't? Well, first thing that he was confronted with uh, when he got into office was, what are you going to do about uh, the previous administration? Mm -hmm. uh, the Nuremberg trials set forth the, uh, the great principle that the the highest order of war crime is aggressive war. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the Germans, Japanese were, were hanged for launching aggressive war. And uh, the, so then we take a look at, well, what did Bush do? Uh, in his fush, first month in office, uh, they had maps drawn up which showed you know, maps of Iraq Mm -hmm. showing which oil companies were going to get which concessions in which areas. I mean, they were, they were planning the conquest of, uh, of Iraq uh, uh, from day one. Mm -hmm. And this was in keeping with the uh, 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 cabal of uh, neocons uh, with their uh, vision of uh, you know, the new American century. Uh, which had been written some 10 years before, mm -hmm. and which said, you know, we got to do a lot of things, overthrow Saddam, we're going to do, you know, launch, uh, uh, launch the empire in Syria in, in a really in a more serious and aggressive fashion. And, uh, and then they, they uh, created this myth of uh, Saddam's uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction, mm -hmm. And uh, they told stories about how he was trying to get uh, uranium out of Africa, and he was building nuclear weapons. And uh, their uh, toady, Mr. Blair, said that uh, Saddam had weapons of mass destruction, which could attack England in 45 minutes. <laughs> and uh, uh, Con yeah. Condoleezza Rice warned, you know, we don't want our first warning to be a mushroom cloud. Mm -hmm. All this stuff. Yeah. Rumsfeld said, we know where the weapons of mass destruction are. He said, they're in Baghdad. They're to Crete. They're into Crete. We know where they are, uh, and it was all lies. Mm -hmm. they, right. they, 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 uh, they just made this stuff up, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so what should? So what, you know, I mean, that's a war crime. Right. Hey, look okay. what they did. Look mm -hmm. what they did to Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 millions of people displaced. Millions left the country. Uh, they totally destroyed the infrastructure. They, they, you know, they don't have clean water. They don't have electricity. They don't have. Uh, jobs, they don't have bridges, they don't got nothing, yeah. and, and somewhere between 100,000 and a million of them have been killed, and they've been left with a government which is, uh, which is tyrannical mm -hmm. and, and, uh, uh, and is inviting civil war by trying to hold power within, uh, within uh, the narrowness of its, of, its, uh, uh, of its roots. You know, for what? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, war, that's a war crime. Right, yeah. you know, Obama comes in and he says, right out of the gate, he says, we're not going to have war crimes investigations. Uh, we're going to look to the future. Yes. Well, you know, we're not going to look back. Except, of course, all criminal prosecutions are looking back. Mm -hmm. It's always about what you've done, not what you might do in the future. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, he said, uh, you know, we're not going to go there. Well, why did he do that? In the narrowest view, you could say, well, for political reasons, he didn't want to. Uh, Annoy the Republicans because maybe they'd be nice to him, you know, if he would mm -hmm. just. Yeah, he you know, did run on yeah. a bipartisan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let their leaders right, off yeah. the hook uh -huh. and so right. on. And and you know, one can make that argument. Problem is, he adopted their policies mm -hmm. and and largely continued their policies. Um, second thing is um, that that uh, the least he could have done was to launch a a truth commission mm -hmm. in South Africa after uh, Mandela and the ANC took over from the. Uh, uh, from the uh, Afrikaners, they, uh, uh, they launched a, a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And what they said was, okay, here's the commission. It's got subpoena power. Everybody's going to have to come in. And if you confess what you did, you won't be prosecuted. And you can confess anything. And guys came in and said, oh, yeah, you know, we, we had death squads. We murdered people. We sought people out. We broke into their homes. We killed them. That's what we did. You know, mm -hmm. we, were, we, were, uh, we were murderers for the, uh, for the apartheid government. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, you know, 
go forth and sin no more. And uh, they didn't have to express uh, regret. A lot of them didn't. They're pretty cold-blooded people. Mm -hmm. But the truth was laid out. Everybody learned it. The, the, it, was, you know, it was now in the books. It was in history. And, uh, and so the likelihood of this kind of conduct being repeated was greatly diminished. We could have done that at least. Should have done that. He didn't do it. Second thing is torture. Mm -hmm. You had the prime movers in the Bush administration, Rumsfeld and Condi Rice, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, 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 the, the Secretary of Defense. Uh, uh, Rumsfeld. No, no, the other one. Uh, um, the, the, Gates. Uh, no, um, in any event. <laughs> these, guys, uh, these guys met in the White House and discussed specifically specifically what kinds of tortures people mm -hmm. were going to be imposing on, uh, on some of the people who had been captured. <laughs> I mean, yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're, they can do this and this and this. And this. Um, this question of waterboarding, which was approved, uh, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the redefinitions of history, they try to say, well, maybe it's not torture, and they got some, some schlock lawyers who would, you know, sign anything. Mm -hmm. They said, hey, tell us waterboarding is not torture. They said, oh, yeah, it doesn't look like torture to me, and give them a, you know, give them a document. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, doing that is a war crime. That's, that's criminal behavior. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but rather than being in prison, you know, these guys are teaching law at Berkeley and things <laughs> like that, you know. So, so uh, 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 what, about, what, about, what, about, uh, what about torture? Well... Japanese uh, uh, war criminals who tortured American soldiers were hanged for it. And the torture that got them hanged was waterboarding. Hmm. Uh, that's in the books. Mm -hmm. That's undeniable. We hanged people for it. And now we say, well, you know, it's okay. Obama comes in. Yeah, well, you know, it's a war crime, but we're not going to call it that. We're going to sweep it under the rug. Um, and And... Perhaps the worst thing that Obama has done, beyond letting the war criminals off, and beyond creating a record which would make it less likely that this would happen, and uh, it is that um, uh, he has strengthened a regime of secrecy. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, stuff is happening that's never happened before. For instance, uh, the government has, uh, has claimed various kinds of privileges to uh, uh, maintain secrets. But traditionally what happens is they go into federal court and uh, when somebody requests information that they you know, presumably have a right to, like they're being prosecuted and they want to know, you know what the facts are that the government's relying on, that sort of thing, what documents uh, the government may have that, that discuss their, uh, their, uh, their behavior, their conduct, or that provide uh, the rationale for them being targeted, uh, they could go to the, the, the person could go to the federal court and say, okay, I want uh, to see all these documents, and the judge would say to the government, "Give me all the documents, and and if you claim that some of it is a secret and doesn't have to be produced to the defendant, I'll make that call." Mm -hmm. The judge would make that call. Well, this is not a perfect system, but uh, you know there may be some basis for some secrecy at some times and some circumstances. Mm -hmm. But what the, what the uh, Obama administration has now done is they say, well, there's a state secrets privilege, which means we don't have to tell the judge. The judge can say, I want all these documents so that I can decide what's secret and what's not. And they can say, well, hey, frankly, judge, uh, we don't have to trust you. You don't get to know it. We have the last word. We, the prosecution, we, the government, have the last word on what the judge gets to see. Now, that is a prescription for tyranny because wow. the fundamental rule of, of, uh, of a free society, as we've long understood it, is that judges decide what the law is, mm -hmm. and they decide conflicts, and that's why they wear the black robes, which, which give them a, you know, a sense of, of, you know, we're not just ordinary people. We are, we are, we are an elite. We are... We are, we are educated for this purpose, we are resolutely neutral, we don't endorse candidates, we don't even vote, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we, uh, we are, uh, you know, we don't contribute to campaigns at least, uh, and, and we are 
we are removed from politics as much as we can do it, and we study the law, and we decide what the law is, mm -hmm. and conflicts between citizens and the government, for instance. And they have, they have said, no, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We, the administration, are the last word on the law. Okay. And, 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 and this authority to say that we are the last, uh, the, the the last word. The last word on the law. Is there a law which gives the president or no? The they're, they're, no, 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 no. So they, 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 it is it is a it is a doctrine which they have created mm -hmm. basically out of thin air. The state secrets doctrine, which says we don't have to let the judges see stuff. Now, uh, ultimately, the Supreme Court could decide whether there's any viability or what degree of viability there may be in such law. But you know, we're laying the groundwork mm -hmm. for. Uh, a, an administration to be the last word on everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. if they say that, that, that they can maintain anything secret that they want, mm -hmm. uh, what greater power that, uh, do they need? The key thing here is uh, people think that a free society emanates from freedom of speech. If I can say what I want, by God, I'm a free citizen, you can't shut me up, I'm uh, uh, you know, I'm living in a democratic system and I get to vote every couple of years and so on. That's what democracy is all about. It's not true. The fundamental element of a free society is access to information. Mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise, we're just, you know, angry prophets talking to ourselves out in the desert. Mm -hmm. We can say anything we want. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt the government any, not yeah. upsetting them any, you know. Mm -hmm. So what? Say what you like. We don't care. You don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you don't. Mm -hmm. If they can control the information, then, you know, we're just sitting here jabbering in the dark. Okay. And that's, that's the fundamental corruption mm -hmm. that we're seeing systematically imposed by this administration. Okay. All right. So we, you know, we talked a lot about, not you and I, but mm -hmm. society talked a lot about, you know, Bush being an imperial president. Mm -hmm. But now we really see that continuing, at least continuing, if not deepening, with the current president. Well, look, for instance, um, two cases that are particularly revealing as to who this guy Obama really is. One is uh, Bradley Manning. Manning, a mere private in the army. He had access to these diplomatic cables and, and, and assorted documents. Uh, and there were, he, he's being prosecuted for you know, things like espionage. I mean, he's facing potentially death. The prosecution is asking, the government, the military, is asking for life in prison for a 24-year-old guy. Uh, the military court can still sentence him to death. So that's the stakes here. They're prosecuting this guy for 18 months. They've held him basically incommunicado and, and, uh, and uh, for most of that period under conditions which are arguably torture. Mm -hmm. uh, and what did he do? He released information which came by him, which is hardly dark state secrets. Mm -hmm. This stuff, 500,000 people had access to the same information that Bradley Manning did. That's how little the government cared about, you know, how mm -hmm. serious this stuff really was. Um, and and he gave it to WikiLeaks, allegedly, probably. Now, ordinarily, and, and now they're trying to prosecute WikiLeaks. They're they're knocking their brains out, mm -hmm. trying to get information to 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 destroy uh, Mr. Assange and and his network. Um, WikiLeaks uh, takes information that somebody gives them and publishes it. Mm -hmm. So does everybody else. I mean, this idea that, you know, secrets are real secrets and so on, it's all nonsense. The government leaks secret information mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. in order to uh, strengthen its political case. Mm -hmm. People in the White House leak confidential stuff, secret stuff, every day of the week. And reporters and newspapers publish it all the time. It's part of, part of the way the system works. Mm -hmm. People get their story out, they get their spin on things and so on, they, they disclose stuff. What uh, Manning did was just like what White House people do, only at a much lower level, a lot of this stuff, and, uh, and they're trying to, to kill him or lock him up for life. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's Obama doing this. It's Obama that put him under these harsh conditions. Uh, and, and the government has never been able to show that a hair on anybody's head was ever put out of place as a result of these disclosures. I mean, initially they said, oh, uh, you know, this guy has blood on his hands. And, mm -hmm. and they've mm -hmm. given up on that. They're not even pretending mm -hmm. he's caused actual harm. 
but we can point to the good that he did. Mm -hmm. the, the diplomatic cables that were released were uh, 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 the people in Tunisia saw what a crook and, and what a sellout to the Americans uh, their, their president was, and they overthrew him. And that began the Arab Spring, the, the greatest explosion of freedom we've seen in, 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 in decades. Uh, the, uh, the American people got to see uh, 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 you know, murder by, uh, by, uh, by helicopter mm -hmm. of, uh, of a bunch of innocent people in Baghdad, uh, saw, saw the video which was released, and, uh, and a lot of American uh, atrocities were disclosed, which led to Obama being unable to negotiate a longer stay for our troops in, uh, in, uh, Af in uh, 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 Iraq because, the, uh, because the, uh, 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 the people were so outraged at what they learned about uh, how the American soldiers had behaved and the secrets that the Americans were keeping from them. So here you got Bradley Manning facing life or death for disclosing stuff that did a lot of good and essentially no harm. Mm -hmm. And what kind of intimidation are they trying to impose on us? Mm -hmm. The yeah. second thing is this guy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop you because, unfortunately, we're at two minutes ah. and I get to close ah, in right. the last two minutes. So all, this has been very valuable information. I hope that people watching will feel as upset as you obviously do I about it so. and as passionate about it. So thank you very much for being here, My Greg. Pleasure. Okay. Sure. So that closes out our program for today. We've been talking with Greg um, Kafori. Kafori, excuse me, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Great Kafori. Uh, and I do want to let you know about uh, a, um, an event which is coming up here in Portland in uh, a few weeks. Greg Clements, who is an attorney and an author, he's from Boston. He's written a book called Corporations Are Not People, Why, Why They Have More Rights Than You Do and What You Can Do About It. Um, the Alliance for Democracy has invited him uh, to Portland to talk about his book. Jeff Clements, Jeff Clements reveals the far-reaching effects of the strange and destructive idea that corporations have human free speech rights because they are people. Such ideas fly in the face of not only all common sense, but most American legal history as well. Most importantly, he offers solutions and tools to help readers join, join a grassroots movement for democracy. So join, please join us, move to amend and KBU Community Radio on Saturday, February 11th from 7 until 9 p.m. at the First Unitarian Church, 12th and Salmon here in Portland. And also watch uh, this program because we'll have an interview with Jeff on starting on February 19th. If, you, uh, if your local public act station does not broadcast populist dialogues, contact the station and request that they broadcast this show and other Populist Dialogue episodes. Populist Dialogues are available to them at no cost at www.pegmedia.org. Want to be part of our crew down here at Alliance for Democracy Populist Dialogues? We'd love to have you. Please contact me at davidafd at ymail.com. The mission of the Alliance for Democracy uh, is to end corporate domination. Thanks to the crew uh, here today, Janet Morris, Beth Kerwin, Tom Thomas, Joan Horton, Roger Bates, and Hollis Benedict. Thank you for watching.